In this section, we look at monadic functors. Recall that the eilenberg mohr category for a monad T is a terminal category in the category of T-inducing adjoint situations. So given in a joint situation FG, there is a unique functor K from A to the eilenberg mohr category such that KF is equal to FT and UTK is equal to G. And recall that K takes a morphism F from A to A prime to GF from GA, G epsilon A to G A prime G epsilon A prime, where epsilon is the co-unit of the above adjunction. We then define that a functor G is monadic if and only if 1, G has a left adjoint F, and 2, the comparison functor K is an equivalence of categories, where the monad T is that induced by the adjoint situation in 1. We then can prove the following properties for a monadic functor. We let G be a monadic functor, then the following conditions hold. 1, G is faithful, 2, G creates limits, and 3, G creates co-limits which are preserved by T and T squared. For the proof, since the comparison functor K is an equivalence by definition of G being a monadic functor, it is enough to show that the above conditions hold for the forgetful functor for the eilenberg mohr category. So for one, UT is clearly faithful since the morphisms in the eilenberg mohr category are defined as a subcollection of morphisms in E. For two, we let D be a diagram in the eilenberg mohr category and let the cone PI be the limit of UTD. To simplify notation, we denote DI by the eilenberg mohr object XI theta I. So then the limiting cone has codomain XI for each I. Then since theta I TPI is a cone on UTD by the universal mapping property of L, there exists a unique E morphism psi such that the following square commutes for each I. Then since the square commutes for each I, it is enough to show that L psi is an eilenberg mohr object. This is because we automatically will have the projections being eilenberg mohr morphisms since the purple square commutes for each I and the universal property for L psi will follow from the universal property of L. So we first show one that psi respects the multiplication mu of the monad. In other words, psi t psi is equal to psi mu L. And to show this by the universal mapping property of L, it is enough to show that for each I, pi psi t psi is equal to pi psi mu L. We postcompose this square by the projections above, then we have for each i, pi psi t psi, which is the green composition on the left, is equal to the top road, theta i t pi t psi. We factor out the t and note that pi psi is equal to theta i t pi by the commuting purple square above. So we have theta i t theta i t square pi. But by the diagram above, which commutes since on the right, x theta i respects the multiplication of the monad and the left square commutes by naturality of mu, we have theta i t pi mu l. Then we use the commutativity of the purple square above again to arrive at pi psi mu l, which is what we wanted to show. Therefore, l psi preserves the multiplication mu. We also need to show that psi respects the unit eta of the monad. In other words, psi eta L is equal to the identity on L. Again, we use the universal mapping property of L and show that for each I, pi psi eta L is equal to pi. So we use the purple commuting square again and precompose it by eta L. Then we have pi psi eta L is equal to theta I t pi eta L by the diagram on the left. We then use the naturality of eta to make the substitution on the right to arrive at theta i, eta xi, pi. Then by the unit law for each theta i, we have this equal to pi, which is what we wanted to show. Therefore, L psi respects the unit eta. And so L psi is an eilenberg mohr object, which means that the forgetful functor for the eilenberg mohr category creates limits. And that concludes one. So we have proven one and two, and we have left to prove three. So let D be a diagram in the eilenberg mohr category and SI be the co-limit for UTD. We denote DI by XI theta I as before. Then the domain of the co-limiting cone is XI for each I. Also we suppose that TSI is the co-limit of TUTD and T squared SI is the co-limit of T squared UTD. Then since SI theta I is a co-cone on TUTD, there exists a unique E morphism psi such that the square commutes for each I by the universal mapping property of TK. 
Therefore, it is enough to show that k psi is an eilenberg mohr object by the same logic as before. So we need to show 1, k psi respects the multiplication mu. In other words, psi t psi is equal to psi mu k. By the universal mapping property of t squared k, it is enough to show for each i, psi t psi t squared si is equal to psi mu k t squared si. So we precompose this diagram by a naturality square for mu, and we first factor out t to arrive at psi t psi t si. Then we use the commutativity of the red square above to arrive at psi t si theta i. Then we distribute t and again use the commuting red square above to obtain si theta i t theta i. Then since xi theta i respects the multiplication mu, this is equal to si theta i mu xi. And once more, using the red square above, we obtain psi tsi mu xi. By the naturality of mu, we then come to psi mu k t squared s. Therefore, psi t psi is equal to psi mu k. And therefore, k psi respects the multiplication mu. We also need to show that k psi respects the unit eta. In other words, psi eta k is equal to the identity of k. So it is enough to show psi eta k si is equal to si for each i by the universal mapping property of k. We have the following diagram commuting by naturality of eta. So psi eta k si is equal to psi t si eta xi. But by the commuting red square above, psi t si is equal to si theta i, and so we obtain si theta i eta xi. Then since xi theta i respects the unit eta, we arrive at si, which is what we wanted to show. Therefore, k psi respects the unit eta, and thus k psi is an eilenberg mohr object, and therefore ut creates colimits, which are preserved by t and t squared. And that completes the proof.